There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. Your Alivino, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of love, when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come fly. So that we might have a relationship with you. We are so very, very grateful. And no matter what is going on in our lives, the turmoils, the storms, the sadness, the joys, the celebrations, you are with us, Father God. And we know we can meet with you through Jesus.
source of mercy That book with blood Wholeheartedly My soul undeserving God, you're so Today's reading is Acts 2, 26 to 41. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will also rest in hope. Because of you, you will not abandon me to the realm of dead. You will not let my let your holy body see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died 
and was buried. His tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and he knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of dead, nor did his body see decay. God raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, and poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make you your enemies, a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all Israelites be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they said, Peter and to the other apostles, Brother, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. Christ forgave you and all for your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises for you and your children, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them and pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accept this message were baptised, And all 3,000 were added to the number that day. The thing that really caught me when I was preparing was Peter replied to them something. He said some words that were really, really pointing to me. Repent and be baptised. Every one of you. He wasn't just talking to one person. He was saying, every one of you, repent and be baptized. Is there something that we need to repent about? Is there something in our life that we need to repent to God about? If so, what is it? Do you know that? I'm sure you would. I'm sure I do. But these words, repent and be baptized, was something that was echoed to me years and years ago when I went to a Christian camp uh, in India. Every year I used to go to this camp. You've probably heard this before. I went there to create Haver, you know, Manic, and uh, create Upset, because I wasn't following Christ at that time. But I used to go to the camp just for fun. And every year, without fail, at the end of the whole week, of, of um, fun and everything that was going on, the preacher would always say, who wants to give their life to Christ? And without fail, at least minimum, I would say, out of 60 young people, 10 would stand up and give their life to Christ. That happened every year. And I used to think, what is going on? What are people doing? Why are they standing up? Why are suddenly people gathered around them and praying for them? Why have they gone forward? What is going on? It never really clicked until one year when I went back to that camp and God changed my life. He changed my life from the inside, not from the outside, from the inside. Because that was, need, that was needed. I needed to repent from all the things I was doing. I asked you guys a few, few weeks ago, Do you remember the time when you repented, when you gave your life to Christ, when you were baptized? How was it? Do you remember it? I remember it very, very clearly. In India, um, we've got a baptismal pool as well in our church. So you you would go down and then you'd be baptized. And when you come out, everyone sings a joyful song saying all about that all your sins have drowned and you are free again. You are new. You are renewed in Christ. That experience of repenting and being baptized is poignant for our faith, for our journey with the Lord. 
Because if we have, if we haven't, we need to. And if we have, we need to remember that we are chosen. We are God's people and he loves us. So my question is, are you wired in this morning? You say, what does that mean? Are you connected this morning? What does your battery look like? If you look at your phone and you can see on top, they would have um, the battery life on it. What does your battery life say? My phone battery life says 70% at the moment. All batteries need to be charged. In chapter one that we read um, a few weeks ago, we read about how the Holy Spirit charges us up. How the Holy Spirit charged up the disciples, empowered them to take Jesus' message out to the world. I don't know if you look around, there are a few electric cars out at the moment. A Tesla are producing quite a lot of them. And they're getting more and more popular. They've got different spots of charging up. So where you go to a petrol station, now you can actually charge up your car there. A company called Hyundai, they made a universal charging station that's been used for those cars. It's a universal charger. Something that cars, the people can just go and plug their cars in to charge them up again. Cars are not the only thing that need charging. Or electric cars. Petrol and diesel, we better fill them up. Or else we'll be waiting for a long time if we're waiting for them to be charged. I want us to look at this concept. Move back to the earliest days of the church. We've seen in the past few weeks how Jesus' words of commission with his disciples included was to wait for the spirit. It's through that spirit, through that spirit, that these men and women were, were able to speak in, their, in, in languages that others understood. And they were able to spread the good news throughout the Roman Empire. And we read, 10 days later, the power fell upon them and they began their public ministry. But just consider all the diversity of people, cultures, languages, customs in their world, and even the greater amount of diversity in our world today. How does that message, how does that message, a Jewish carpenter who lived about around 2000 years ago, located in a specific region of the world, connect with a vast audience, with us. How does that do it? It's because of a universal power source, the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter two, verses one and four we read a few weeks ago. It said, on the days of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like a roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then they looked, then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each one of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages. And the Holy Spirit gave them their ability. We can see that God's Spirit here shows up and made sense to them. Sound of wind, the roar of a breath of God, flames of fire. It reminds us from the Old Testament of the burning bush. They were speaking real languages. They were just not just uttering some words. They were speaking real languages. So friends, are you charged up? 
If your phone needs charging, you plug in. But if your charger is broken, or if it has issues in it, it won't charge. I've had few chargers in my life where either the wire has been twisted in a in certain way, so it stopped charging the phones. Or even I had problems with my laptop a few months ago where the charger stopped working. So what happened? Had to get another charger. Or if the wire was faulty, get a new wire. A broken plug prevents the power from reaching its potential. What happened on Pentecost was God preparing spiritual power to flow into his creation through Jesus' disciples. Nothing has changed from then to now. Nothing has changed. The power that we utilize for everything is the same power that came to the disciples a long time ago. So what do we do about that power? We have to put the power to work by sharing the gospel message. Unless we share, how will people know? Unless we physically share, how will people know? Friends, spirit, this spirit is with everybody. There's no distinction in gender, race, culture barriers. The spirit is for everybody. But in order for that message to hit home, it needs to be empowered. Now, electricity won't flow if there isn't a complete circuit. So what happens then when we are plugged in? Or if you're not plugged in, what happens? If you're plugged in and not charging up, then you will call customer support and you will seek advice. You will say, what is going on? I'm plugged in, why is this not charging? Friends, we have an opportunity to renew ourselves, to charge ourselves. And if we are charged up, are we using that power? The words that we read earlier in this, in this passage, Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Repent, charge yourself up. Say sorry and be filled with the Holy Spirit. But there's an important message here for us. When we read those last few words in those verses, those who accepted this message were baptized. Those who accepted this message were baptized. Friends, there are going to be people who are going to be around us who are not going to accept the message. What do we do? We need to carry on praying for them. We sh shouldn't give hope, give up hope. The Spirit is for us, for everyone. But are we repenting? Are we inviting that back in our lives? What encouraged me from this passage while I was preparing was those who repented, those who accepted that message were not just few people, thousands of people. 3,000 were added to, that, to their number on that day. How exciting would have been that time. 3,000 people added. So my question to myself is, how many people am I adding to that number? Question that you should ask yourself. How many people are you adding to that number? And if you are not, why not? What is stopping us from doing that? 
God wants us to share his good news with others. And if we don't do it, people won't know. It's simple as that. So, are we charged up? Are we wired in? Are we plugged in? If so, are we ready to go out and share the good news? If not, have we repented? Repent and be baptized. Repent for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So friends, my prayer is that may we have expectant hearts to be filled with his Spirit. My prayer is that one day we will be that church that will be sharing that good news and seeing people changing their lives. It would be amazing. It would be excellent. It would be fantastic. But the buck doesn't stop with us. It should not. We have got a responsibility. And if we are not doing that responsibility, then we are failing ourselves. God has given us an opportunity, a responsibility, and a task. Are we fulfilling that? If not, why? So my prayer is that, Father God, just, just enable us to be that people that we need to be. So that we can share your good news. Let's pray together. This question of us being charged up, are we plugged in? Are we wired up? As we ask ourselves that question, as we examine our lives, Lord, Holy Spirit, come and fill our lives. If we have lost that connectivity, Lord, I pray may you complete that circuit in our lives. If there is sin that needs to be repented upon, Lord, may we do that. Your word says, repent and be baptized. Lord, help us to be that people. Those people that have repented baptized but we haven't just stopped there we have moved forward in sharing your good news so Lord Jesus I pray that throughout this week may you continue to speak to us we want to thank you for your presence amongst us this morning we want to praise you for your spirit amongst us this morning. And Lord, as we go, we, I pray that maybe we be filled, refreshed and renewed by your spirit. Holy Spirit, come and fill us up. Renew our lives, our mind, our hearts. Make us new. We praise your name. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we have got hope in this world when so many around us don't. We have got hope because we believe in you, Lord Jesus. We have got hope because of your death on that cross. 
But you didn't remain dead. You defeated death. And that gives us hope because you are alive today. So may we claim that victory. May we claim that hope. And may we share that with others. Those around us who don't have that. So Lord, I want to thank you for your word that reminds us that we need to repent and be baptized in your spirit. So Lord, may your will be done in our lives. May we be the people who completely give our lives to you in faith, in trust, in hope, that you will take it, shape it, and mould it in the way that you want it to be. So Lord Jesus, throughout this week, through your spirit, be with us. Keep us safe. Renew our minds. And renew our hearts. In your precious name we ask. Amen.